let's pick things up where we left off with you, say, shall we? Now, we were just, uh... Well, if he didn't come for you, he came because there's something important here he has to watch over. We just learned about Aki and Naoki's backstory. Why, why Aki is so... aggressively protective over Naoki. And it's honestly justified, her attitude towards Naoki, and her anger at... Kangai letting Naoki walk into a body discovery. Despite... Realistically, Kangai had no way of... knowing what he was sending Naoki to. And knowing how bad that was for Naoki to walk into. So, ultimately, in terms of the little spat they had in this video... Kangai was justified in being all, what the hell are you flipping out on me for? And Aki was justified for losing her shit, too. Because she knows what this will do to Naoki, even though it wasn't Kangai's fault, so to speak. I do think Kangai could have taken Naoki's premonition seriously and gone with him. Perhaps. Or gone in his stead, but... Kangai was a bit tied up at the time, being suspected of theft, so... No one's the asshole here. And now we... the topic shifted slightly. Which button is history? Well, if he didn't come for you, he came because there's something important here he has to watch over. Log, how do I log? Save, load. Something, fast forward, next. We came here to investigate Auten, who also died shortly after I, after I returned. We're still, we are currently trying to sort, sort out the issue of what Kangai's involvement in all of this is. So whatever is here really is connected to you. I groan. Why? I don't even know any of these people. Then the question is, how do they know you? It's a good question. I bury my head in my hands. I don't think I want to know. I don't think we have a choice. You're not wrong. We're going to have to face it sooner or later. Yeah, I know. Aki places her hand against mine, and I feel as if I've just taken in a breath of fresh air. My shoulders feel lighter, and the leftover sickness from today dissolves. Huh? What are you doing? Filtering your thoughts? It works for the others. I assume it's working for you, too? I smile at her. Yeah, it is. I haven't felt this way in a long time. Aki wraps her fingers around mine and lowers my hand. Good. Oh. The two of us sit in silence for a few minutes, and I soak in the feeling of having only my own thoughts to contend with. Aki's voice gently breaks the silence. Tomorrow's going to be rough. You should get some sleep. Yeah, I guess so. I let my hand slip from hers, expecting the weight of the day to flood back into my mind. Instead, the feelings creep sluggishly into the edges of my mind. With a stubborn thought, I push them aside. Aki beams at me. You'll be able to hold on to yourself longer each time. That sounds ideal. See you in the morning. Thank you, Aki. Aki waves cheerfully, but her eyes look weary. Gosh. Naoki and Eren are sound asleep by the time I enter the room. I close the door gently behind me and crawl into my sleeping bag. The first time in three years I sleep without nightmares. Oh, wow. When it comes to the piercing cell phone ring, I grit my teeth and silently curse whoever invented the cell phone before answering. But Good morning to you too, Mr. Alexander. Gursky sounds amused. You know I hate that name. Just be glad I haven't told Aki about you. She'd have a field day. Your generosity is overwhelming. I 
assume there's a reason for this call other than your desire to start the day with the melodious sound of my voice. Excellent deduction, kid. You'll be a brilliant detective yet. Yeah. Ha. Huh. Johansson's death is public news now. We haven't released the details or the fact that we suspect it was murder. Everyone thinks it was an accident at the bell tower. And? And we need you to do what you're good at. Find the killer before this blows up. Talk to everyone around him and figure out who did it. All while hiding the fact that this was a murder in the first place? Yes. You can handle that, right? I know the drill. What about the others? You're a team, aren't you? If you need any help, you can text them or me. He pauses for a moment. Try not to make any calls if you can. You never know who might be listening. That's concerning. I glance up and see Aaron hunched over his desk, staring blankly in my direction. Good point. Also, try not to get killed. That would be a problem. But, uh, uh, yeah, it would. Thanks for your concern. That's dire. Is there something you know that I don't? Probably. Now go to work. Probably? I roll my eyes. You want fries with that? Gursky snorts. Yes, but make the soda a diet. I'm watching my weight. Ah, yes. Excellent. He hangs up before I can come up with a retort. Pocket my phone and sigh. Who was that? Aaron's voice lacks the energy he had yesterday. Ah, uh, police. They said not to talk about Johansson's death. You mean his murder? I sigh and nod. Yeah, his murder. Aaron nods and spins slowly in his chair until his legs bump listlessly against the desk. I knew it. Something like that couldn't have been an accident. Hmm, you going to be an issue here? He sighs. I guess we have to reveal to you that we are actually investigating this if we want you to actually keep this hush-hush. Well, I won't tell anyone. I don't want to talk about it at all if I don't have to. Okay, scratch that. You're gonna be good. Oh, okay. Investigation time. Oh, this is interesting. Especially if you're textbooks with long titles and a yearbook of Western State University. English to Thai dictionary and some sci-fi novels. The out of the window faces away from the campus. It's rather uninspiring. The chair spins around easily. That was a fun for the whole family. Aaron's bedsheets have the Western State University logo on them. Isn't that the University of Edgewater's rival school? towel hangs off of David's bed. Math and science books, they, are, uh, they uh, all have pre-owned stickers on them. Book about computer programming. The inside cover says it belonged to some guy named Kev. Kevin? Wait a minute, Kevin. I guess you sold your book back before you went to work for Willie Martin and died. Simple enough. It's an interesting update to the investigation bit. So, what do we know so far? Dr. Johansson was working on organ growth just like Alton Engineering. Alton and Shen Guan's test subjects died due to one of the experiments under Johansson. Grumpy Pants Gursky, nice. What do I. Aaron slumps over his desk, resting his head in one hand and doodling a series of spirals in his binder with the other. You look busy. He snorts derisively. Super busy. These spirals won't draw themselves. Fair enough. If they did, that would be weird. He groans and throws his pen across the room. Rolls sluggishly across the carpet before lodging itself in a pile of discarded clothing. This is so stupid! Stupid? Stupid! Super stupid! He runs his fingers through his hair furiously, as if he's trying to find something to hold on to. Dr. Johansson, I, I mean... He pounds his fists at the desk. That was not a thing I wanted to see, ever. That's not a thing anyone should ever have to see. He pushes himself away from the desk and starts to stand up. He gives up halfway through and slumps down in his seat again. Didn't like that pen, anyway. He traces out the spirals on, the, on his paper with his finger. 
How are you okay with this? What? He clutches his camera for comfort. You saw it. The blood and other parts. I don't even want to be awake, but Kizaki just got up and left an hour ago. He points at me. And you look like you just had the best night's sleep of your life. Quite a bit of help uh, in that regard. Really? Because I can tell you that I didn't. I could add that sleeping after a death experience is usually the worst part. It's probably best to keep that to myself. Aaron lets out a long, weary sigh. But you're fine now. I, I, I guarantee you, my friend, I am not normally this fine. I had a little bit of uh, friendly, th friendly therapeutic thought filtering yesterday night. Hardly. I guess I'm just better at hiding it. Yeah? I've seen a lot of junk. Stuff that people like to pretend doesn't exist. I sit down in the chair opposite Aaron. And the hard part is going on with life. I mean, how can you, when you see such an ugly side to humanity? Yeah, I know that feeling. And you know it's not something you're ever fine with. You just know that there are still important things to be done. So you have to stand up and keep going. Sounds like you've got some experience in that area. Yeah, a fair amount. I sigh and prop my head in my hand. Well, I tried quitting once. Quitting everything, I mean. This one very close to me didn't let me. But now I keep going. No matter what happens, I have to. Well, whoever that person is, I have my thanks. Oh? You feeling better? Um, sort of. I laugh nervously. Sort of, it's better than nothing. I just don't know if I can handle this much longer. Handle what? All the secrets. Yesterday, the police said I couldn't say anything about Johansson's death. Jupiter called last night to see if I was feeling okay, and I didn't even answer the phone. I didn't know what to say to her. I don't blame you there. You didn't tell now her any, knows, anything either. Everyone knows, but to pretend it was an accident. He buries his head in his hands. They're my friends. I can't lie to them. I... I wouldn't know how. Yeah, it's asking a lot of you. It's asking a lot of both of us. Uh, uh, yeah, us. This undercover thing is annoying. I think I liked it better when I just didn't talk to anyone ever. You know, maybe you should take it easy for a while. Rest. You don't have to be up right now, do you? No, but... Can't sleep. You said you don't want to be awake right now, so don't be. I, I shouldn't. I think maybe it's best if you do. If you want to talk, I can come back later. But for now, you need rest. I guess that makes sense. Still feels super stupid. I feel like a wimp. Ah, oh, there's no need for that. You should never feel like a wimp for caring about human life. It's not as if having a high tolerance for blood and guts is something to be proud of. You might be the only person who thinks that way. Better than no one at all. Aaron nods and stands slowly. I guess I'll try to get some sleep then. Maybe everything will make more sense when I wake up. Fair enough. Aaron's still sleeping. I should give him more time. Good night. Lee Mei's here. Hello. Hey, Lee Mei. You okay? Okay. Right. Stupid question. Sorry. Lee Mei smiles and shakes her head. Not stupid. There are not many here, so it is quiet. Well, that's promising. Is that why you're here? There are fewer people? Lee Mei shakes her head. Aki instructed me to protect Aaron. Oh. Why? He may come to harm. He was a witness, so... Now that I think about it, Aaron and Naoki were the first to find the body, but Aaron knows everyone here pretty well. He's probably the most likely to remember something to tie the killer to the scene. Aki was right to worry for his safety. But why Lee May? Eh, we know why Lee May. I will not allow him to be hurt. Lee May seems to have picked up on my concern. I trust he'll keep him safe, but I'm more worried about whether or not you'll be hurt. Why? Because I don't want you to get hurt, obviously. Mimei's eyes grow distant. 
I am a rabbit in a cage. We live only for the sake of others. No! Don't say that. What? Please do not worry for me. I'm gonna worry for you anyway, duh. I'm gonna worry for you anyway. Don't be ridiculous. Of course I'm gonna worry about you. You're my friend and my teammate. We're supposed to take care of each other. Are we friends? You really have to ask? Of course we are. Then you are my first friend. Aww. What about Aki and Naoki? Aki says we are family. You can be both, you know. Then I think we are both. Good. Then I'm your third friend? Detective Gursky? He is not family. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's Aki's influence for sure. Maybe I should leave that topic alone for now. Whoa. Who is Schultz? All right, let's. Have you ever, have you ever met Schultz? What? Oops. What? Huh? Um, have you ever met Schultz? Who? She's the one in charge of this um work program. I can't detect the girls. were talking about her earlier. I was wondering if you ever ever met her. So Schultz was in charge of Kangai and his sister. Way back when. Is also in charge of Aki and Naoki's situation. Pime's eyes light up with recognition. Yes, I have seen her. Oh, you have? Oh? Does she ever come to over to the apartment or anything? Please say no. Visits are rare. She's often busy. Hmm. Yes, I gathered as much based on her presence. Apparently, everywhere. And when did you meet? Limei holds up her hands and begins counting on her fingers. We first met for my demonstration. I did not hear what she said, but I knew she was very impressed. Dem demonstration Then again at my hearing. I did not understand her words at the time, but she was very... Limei frowns as if she can't quite find the word she's looking for. On fire? Fiery? Passionate? That sounds about right. Then after Aki and Aoki took me in, we met again. She seemed happy to see me. Hmm. Whoa, Shoals happy? That's a new one. Maybe it was relieved, as if she no longer had worry. Wait, you knew her before Aki and Naoki? They may nod plainly as if I just asked the most obvious question in the world. What exactly do you mean by demonstration? And what was your hearing? That I may not speak of. But you just did. I am instructed not to share my former work. And I have given you no such knowledge. Yeah, I guess you didn't. You take things pretty literally, don't you? Do I? Possibly. I guess we'll just flat out ask. Why do you sleep in a closet anyways? It is more safe. More safe than what? Sleep is vulnerability. It is foolish to be exposed. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Do you think you're, you you're going to be attacked while you sleep? Do you not? I I am now. <laughs> oh, um, I guess I never thought about it. Great, I'm never going to sleep easy again. I don't suppose you've got room for two in that closet. The... Uh -uh. uh, Okay, that didn't come out right at all. Let's just pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> Any idea who the killer is? Li Mei shakes her head. She looks disappointed. I guess killing intent isn't really an emotion, huh? Often there is anger or bitterness. Hmm, that's true. Li Mei's eyes are downcast. What? Huh. All who are here harbor an anger in their hearts. Aaron is truly distressed, but he also holds anger. Anger? Jupiter is frustrated and tired. She feels as if she is alone. That's understandable, given what we know about her. And they hesitates. It's obvious she's not sure if she should tell me what's on her mind. What are you thinking? Aki and Naoki are angry too. Oh. Aki is angry because she feels as if she has failed. To protect Naoki? Naoki is angry because he feels he is not strong. Oh no. What about you? Are you angry too? I do not wish to be, but I am not sure. Hmm. 
It is okay if you, if you are. Kind of a lot's happened, so it'd be entirely understandable for you to feel that way. So what do you think of Nathan and David, the two dorks working under Jupiter? They are... One of them is also dating Chance, which is going to make things really awkward. She tilts her head to the side. Humorous? You think they're funny? They speak in jokes. Uh, what about that resentment you were talking about? Are they angry too? Disappointed. About what? They look like they're having fun. They cling to discontent, even in happiness. Hmm. Great. So everyone's in a bad mood. That's reassuring. That's all I got. Okay. Take care of yourself, Lee May. I'll be around. Oh, an old building. When the label was the first building on the campus. Most we got. There's not really much to see here. Hockey's here. Hello. Morning, Con. How are you? Feeling a lot better after last night. Thanks. Glad to hear it. How are you? We're going to have to tread carefully today. Now that everyone knows Johansson's dead, the killer is probably going to be on edge. Be careful, okay? You too. Do you really think Aaron's in danger? You mean, why did I leave Lee May to watch over him? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess Aaron's most likely to remember something incriminating, but... But you don't think it warrants a 24-hour bodyguard? Just weird. It's better than leaving him alone now and regretting it later. Okay, good point. Besides, there's also the other option. Another option? He could be the killer. If that's the case, I don't want him running away. That also fitting since we nearly had that problem in the last case we worked. Can Lee May really stop him from running away? She's kind of small. If it came down to a fight, I'd be more worried about Aaron. But I told her to use non-lethal force, so everything should be fine. Khan's just there doing the, the blinking man meme. I'm sorry, what? That's the least comforting thing I've heard all day. It's still early. <laughs> Any ideas of the killers? It's a little early to be asking that, don't you think? True, but it's an option. But if you want my option. initial impression, there's something about this whole setup that makes me feel really uncomfortable. Besides the body smashed up in the bell tower? No, that's basically it. Body smashed up in the bell tower. Yeah, you're right. That does make me feel uncomfortable, too. Even if Nalkin hadn't forth. heard something wrong, the body would have been discovered fairly quickly. The bell towers maintained pretty regularly, so whoever did this wasn't concerned about hiding the body. They're concerned about making a statement, or... making Dr. Johansson suffer? They didn't plan to kill Dr. Johansson. You think it was an accident? Well, not exactly. All the planned murders I've seen, they usually fall into one or two categories. There are clean murders, like poison. There are messy murders, like strangling and stabbing. Messy murders are ones that are very personal. Whoever's doing it wants to feel directly responsible for the death. The scene itself is very messy, but the weapon is very impersonal. You can't feel your victim die if you're watching them get smashed by a bell. I guess given that he seemed to still be conscious. Since we saw Naoki and Aaron approach, in Dr. Johansson's dying moments. It's highly possible they just watched him suffer. So why do it? How would anyone choose the bell as the weapon? Maybe it was available. The murderer didn't plan it out, but he or she jumped on the opportunity when it presented itself. So it may have been an accident, but more likely it was a crime of opportunity. Sort of like how a normal person doesn't think about stealing cars, but if you pass one with the keys of the engine, it's mm -hmm. tempting. Normal people don't think about stealing cars? What? Please tell me you're joking. Sure, why not? <laughs> I mean... I, I, I say this affectionately, but do you really count as normal people here? I say this entirely... I say this entirely affectionately, Aki, but... Come on. That's all for now. No more questions. Yeah. Map of the camp sh campus should help me find my way around. Rather large fountain. Hmm. 
There's no obvious source of water. Can you call it a fountain? Well, yeah, because it's... Where do you think the water's coming from? Library. Sign the door says it's open 24 hours a day. There's a squirrel in this tree. Doesn't seem scared of me all at all. It's also kind of fat. Dr. Johansson died here. It's off limits to the public now. Faculty parking only. In the bloke of the cars, the paychecks here aren't that great. According to the plaque on the side, this bench is made of recycled plastic. Donated by the Tass family. How generous. Let's see, where we oh wow, we got lots of places we can go. Student housing, bell tower, ILG library. Wow, we got a lot of places we can go. Go to the library. Con guy, perfect timing. We need a tiebreaker. Shut up. Okay, fine, I'll listen. Four Zombies. What? I'm afraid reanimated reanimated corpses aren't my area of expertise. That's okay. We're talking weaponry anyway. In the case of a zombie apocalypse, we were debating whether it's better to carry a gun or a sword. Sword, obviously. Assuming you're only allowed one weapon. Guns have a longer range, and they're deadlier. What happens if you run out of ammo? But swords don't run out of ammo, and they're quieter. Except you have to get within biting distance to even use a sword. Hello, infection. So wear armor, and what are the odds you're going to hit the head of a moving target with a gun anyway? Pretty high if you actually practice, and sure easier than trying to cut a zombie in half. Hey, I know how to handle the sword. I've been training for years. I have the power of God and anime on my side. Not to rain on your parade. If there were a zombie apocalypse, you'd probably be killed by other humans long before the zombies arrive. What? Zombies are hardly different from pack animals. They just multiply faster. A situation with limited resources and the threat of multiplying predators. First thing you do is stock up on resources, right? Well, yeah. As will every other person on Earth. Someone will probably kill you for your food and weapons before you even see a zombie. Has anyone ever told you you're a really gloomy person? Constantly. I have no clue why, but may have been mentioned once or twice. <laughs> Back. A bunch of Warren school books look like Nathan's. A bunch of intro to biology books. I think they're David's. A photo from a nearby forest. A Japanese resort near the base of this mountain. My family vacationed there a long time ago. A local scenery from outside of Edgewater. The mountains from nearby. Some sort of plastic plant. Kind of dusty. Ooh, books, books, books. A collection of computer science books. I have no idea what any of this is. Philosophy and psychology. Huh. Criminal psychology. Wish I had that one back in the day. Shuffle books on social sciences. No doubt Schultz in Schultz ignores half the content in the law books here. Yeah. Language books. Mostly intro courses, it seems. Some math and science, both with uninspired covers. Technology and applied science. There's a book here about raising cows. Oh. Awesome. A series of books about art and recreation. Fun. Feel the enjoyment dripping from your... Band-Aid. Con guy! Good to see we haven't scared you away yet. I've got office hours soon. Was there something you wanted to know? Not much. Just feeling kind of weird, I guess. Especially with what happened yesterday. Oh, you heard about Dr. Johansson? Yeah. That's a terrible way to go, accidentally falling off the tower like that. That's what happened? That's what everyone's been saying. Not like it makes any sense for him to be up there in the first place, but whatever. You don't seem that cut up about it. Everyone dies eventually. Feeling bad won't bring him back. That's a unexpectedly... dark but reasonable take from someone with your attitude. How long have you been a student here? Maybe... three years? So you're a senior. I only came here for grad school. Got oh, my okay. BS in Steel City. Nathan's been here the longest. 
Technically, he's got seniority on his team, but Jupiter was a lot better with the undergrads. David snorts and glances in Nathan's direction. Nathan flirts, flits among the students at his table, pausing once in a while to offer an exasperated sigh. He's terrible at teaching. No patience for it. I think he expects everyone else to be like him. Hmm. How so? He learns everything the first time around. I guess you could call him a natural. Interesting. Unlike the rest of us who actually have to study. I'm jealous already. No more questions. Okay, that's all right for now. Later. Hey, just wanted to say sorry about yesterday. Oh? You know, the locking you up and stuff. Eh, don't sweat it. It's not the first time. Nathan coughs. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, probably shouldn't have shared that little tidbit. Alright, tell me about Dr. Johansson. Did he have any quarrels with anyone recently? Not that I can think of. Why? Just curious. I was researching him before I came. I saw that some people disagree with his research. There will always be dissidents, especially when you're a trailblazer. But personally, mm, I think yes. he was a great man with great ideas. We all believed in his work. That's why we're here. It seemed like Shen Guan and William Auten kind of branched out from under him. But his ideas might still be noble. Those two took it in a different direction. Although, and did some awful shit. Although? He and Jupiter were definitely arguing about something last week. Oh. Oh? Do you know what? Sorry, I didn't listen in too closely. She doesn't get angry too often, but when she does, it's best to just hide. He seems like she's just under a lot of stress trying to run the lab, so... If she gets angry, it's probably justified to some degree. How long have you been student here? Um... This is year seven, I think. For your BS and, uh, you're a grad student as well? The whole undergrad thing, then stuck around for the grad program as well. Yep, thought so. Wow, that's a long time to stay at the same school. Not if you enjoy it. I don't understand why some people think they have to keep moving around to do new things. Maybe it's for the experience. But to what end? We can say experience, experience all we want, but isn't it just a way to cover up how unhappy we are with our own situation? Hmm. It's not always like that. What if people just really enjoy it? It could be like that, but it's not always like that. So you're a wandering sort of guy. No place to call home and all that. Well, shit, they got me there. Um, you could say that. Is it because you enjoy it, or because you're not happy with anywhere you've been? I, I don't know. Both? Why does it matter? Even a ship needs a harbor to come home to when the ocean is rough. I'm not saying you have to settle down and start a family or anything, but I hope you'll be able to find a place to anchor yourself. That's a... I feel like that's a mature take. Like, there's still people who no doubt go around taking their... themselves multiple pla places all around to gather new experiences, and that's great. But I feel like that's a mature take on the matter. In that there's a value to finding a place you're comfortable putting down those roots. And developing yourself. Establishing yourself in one place. Maybe that's just maybe that's an old-fashioned take. Definitely, if you apply that opinion of his to the job market, job market is definitely in a sort of place where a lot of employers out there don't always value you as much as you should be valued and that you are entirely justified in 
looking around for new opportunities. Who will value who will value you for the experience you've gained and give you that step up that you deserve. I'd say that places these days that will value you and let you put down those roots for a long period of time, develop and grow at one place. That's less common these days than it would have been in your parents' days. Of course, they're the same parents who, uh, who say, go in and ask for an application. Go in and ask for a job application. Put yourself out there. And, like, no, things have changed now. Grandpa. Boomer. No more questions. I'll let you get back to your students. See you. I didn't really... All you really learned from this is that Jupiter had some dissension. No more questions. <sighs> Biology? It's a lily floating in this water. Front door's unlocked. Back door. Okay. Door opens easily. Sort of a numeric pad. You can enter a security code in it, I guess. Is that an alarm? It might go off if I enter the wrong code. Better be careful. Naturally, we're gonna try and, uh... Go in. Alright, we're just going in the back door. Sort of cork board for announcements. Doesn't like it. Doesn't look like it gets much traffic. Fire extinguisher. Piece of fire break glass. There's a security camera at the end of the hall. Mr. Owen's video footage came from that camera. This way to the lab. Sleep lab. Main lab. Back door. Front door. Okay, so that's relatively simple. Sleep lab. Cushions on this couch are pretty hard. I don't I don't enjoy it. Lamp. Not particularly exciting. Chair. Doesn't like many people have used it. Interesting that we can go here though. Main lab? Jupiter's here. I'll have a look around first. Row of sinks. There's a collection of beakers piled in one. Binder filled with scribbled notes. The handwriting is near indecipherable. The microscope is probably expensive. There's nothing sitting on the slide. Nothing in this flask? Well, except air, I guess. Laptop labeled Property of University of Edgewater. It looks kind of old. You need, you need a laptop refresh, guys. Row of bottles filled with some sort of liquid. They're all labeled with really long words. Let's not touch those. Machines of some sort? I'm not sure what they do, but I'm sure they're expensive. Printer. I should examine this further. Okay. It's a row of printers against the wall. The furthest one has a, blink has a blinking red light. What's wrong with your printer? Ignore it. It broke nearly half a year ago, but we rarely touch it. Dr. Johansson is the only one who keeps trying to use it. Well, let's fix it, then. The screen of the printer reads, One print job in queue. Hmm. Can Dr. Johansson try to print something? Maybe it's important. If I fix the printer, I can see what he was working on. Glance at Jupiter. I probably should try this fix this thing while she's still here. She mentioned wanting to check up on Aaron, but I could convince her to go see him, but I don't know how much time that'll buy me. Is there a way to stall her after she leaves? Okay, we've got the things to do. Jupiter leans against the counter, examining something in her microscope. She sighs, leans back, and presses her, presses her thumbs against the bridge of her nose. You okay? No. No, not really. What's wrong? Purses her lips. You didn't hear? Dr. Johansson is dead. What? He died sometime yesterday. There are police on campus right now, asking all sorts of questions. And the bell tower has been marked as some sort of crime scene. The police are saying it was an accident, but they're behaving strangely. I don't know what to think. 
They're terrible at this secret keeping thing. Probably not a good idea to try to explain it without knowing all the details. I know, but after you guys took off yesterday and Yagarin didn't return any of my calls, I was worried something terrible happened. Like? I knew you were heading to the bell tower. If you had found the body? Well, about that. Oh, well, um... You did? Yeah. Aaron and Kizaki saw it first, but... So last night, you uh, lied to me. Whoops, sorry. I'm sorry, we weren't allowed to say anything. I suppose I should have expected that. What about Eren? Is he okay? No, not really. He wasn't hurt physically, if that's what you mean. But? He's still kind of traumatized from what we saw. I'm not surprised. He was always uncomfortable when we had to euthanize the animals. I should probably go check on him sometime to see how he's doing. I think he just wants to sleep right now. Then I'll talk to him later. Hmm. Well, let's jump right in to ask this question. Do you know why someone would want Dr. Johansson dead? No sé. He was always good to us and never spoke ill of anyone. Maybe it's an extremist who hates us genetic manipulation research? He could have simply been in the wrong place at the wrong time. You're throwing out ideas, but you don't sound very convinced by any of them. The truth is, I cannot think of anyone who didn't like him. Good point. So, you and Chance, huh? You don't get along, eh? One mouse. So you and Chance don't get along? What makes you think that we don't get along? Her voice oozes with sarcasm. Touché. Okay, bad question. No, it's a fair question. Just not a pleasant thing for me to discuss. Sorry, forget I asked. No, it's fine. If you stick around, you'll find out about it sooner or later. Did you? Maybe. I'd hmm. rather you hear it from me instead of over the rumor train. Chance is an undergrad who was given special permission to join Dr. Johansson's team. I argued against it, but David vouched for her. David, huh? She's certainly smart enough to work on the project, but she lacks emotional and mental maturity. She behaves like a child when things don't go her way, and she's manipulative. More than once, the girl has tried to pit members of the team against each other with gossip and lies. Well, Jupiter sighs heavily. How so? Last year, Sean stepped down as head of Dr. Johansson's lab, said his work for the school was taking up too much time. Chance told me I'd be a perfect replacement, and she encouraged me to petition Dr. Johansson for the spot. But... but you got it. I did. Then I discovered Chance told Nathan that the spot should have been his since he has seniority. She told him that if I hadn't pressured Johansson into picking me, he would have had it. Ah. I tried to smooth it over with him, but I think he's still a little bit hurt. And of course, it's gotten worse ever since I started dating David. Ah. What? She and David used to be together. After they broke up, David and I started seeing each other. Oh no. She was so mad at him, she threw hot coffee in his face. Wow, that's... Wait, David is the ex-boyfriend... ...who she mentioned in the first game, then. Ow. After that happened, I asked Dr. Johansson to remove her. She's destructive. But she's still here. Yes. I see. If she were willing to take her work seriously, I'd appreciate having her around. But right now, it feels more like she's trying to tear us apart. There isn't a member of this group she hasn't tried to manipulate in one way or another. Well... No more questions. We'll talk later. You know where to find me. You're alright. I, I do like you. You're... You're just trying your best for the sake of the lab. I respect that. Right, back to where we go. Back up front. Hi, Aki. No more questions. Hey, are you lost? This is the library, right? Yeah. Then I'm pretty sure I'm not lost. It's just that you come in here a lot. But you don't seem to be looking for anything in particular. I'm just exploring. You seem more like you're going in circles. Okay, there's a little bit of that in there. 
You're not bored, are you? You need something to do? Have you gotten a chance to ride one of the bikes? Uh, there are bikes? Yeah. Every few years, Sean's family donates a fleet of bikes to the school. Ah, uh, Sean is the one who is uh, dating Chance now. Anyone who wants to use it can just grab one and bike around campus. That sounds like it has the potential to go very wrong very quickly. Yeah, the bikes get wrecked or stolen pretty fast. But it's still cool. The Tasty family is probably the most awesome family ever. Oh, they donate the benches too. Rich, smart, and environmentally responsible? The whole family is a triple threat. And Sean's the only eligible bachelor of the whole bunch. Honestly, if Jupiter cheated on me with him, I wouldn't mind at all. Wow. What the... T that's Keep a... Mind, man. <laughs> well... <laughs> Alright then. Okay, so basically Sean and the Tass is our perfect and rich. Super sexy. Alrighty then. Sean of the Tassies. Sounds like a great name for a band. Okay. I call dibs on lead guitar. <laughs> Man, I wanted lead guitar. The next time be faster. Alrighty then. So you and Chance used to date. Also your your NTR. Oh, you and Chance used to date? <laughs> well aren't you, Nebby? Who told you that? Jupiter. Figures. Didn't end too well. I'm hard pressed to think of a way hot coffee to the face is a good thing. Why did you break up? She said I wasn't being supportive enough, so she broke it off. Hmm. Honestly, I think she was just looking for a reason. After Entirely I fair. told Dr. Johansson she'd be good for his team, she suddenly seemed uninterested in me. She got what she wanted. And why the coffee? Um, well, Jupe and I went to the coffee shop where she works. Chance asked if Jupe was a replacement, and I told her she'd actually have to matter for me to need a replacement. Wow. Mature. Well, I never claimed to make intelligent life decisions. Fair enough. So you weren't just dating Jupiter to get back a chance? Of course not! Sorry, I'm not trying to be skeptical, it's just... It's just you don't see how someone as studious as Jupe would date a slacker like me? <laughs> Well... Listen, man. I like Jupe, so I asked her out. She said yes, so I guess that means she likes me. Fair enough. And I don't know if it's gonna work out or not, but I had to at least give it a shot. Haven't you met anyone like that? Like what? Like, you don't know if it'll be a good fit, but you know you'll regret it if you don't try. Oh, I don't know. I guess I never thought about it. Well, you should. You don't want to miss out on cool stuff because you're not looking for it. No more questions. Later. You two on bad terms. Who told you that? I was just wondering. I mean, she got the job you wanted after all. Okay, yes. I was mad that Johansson appointed her and things were really weird for a while. But we worked it out. That's what people do. Fair enough. So you're totally fine now? I haven't seen any indication of anything to suggest otherwise. That's a, that's an oddly political answer. What about Chance? Wasn't she unhappy that Jupiter got the job? I heard you were talking with her about it. She was just being supportive. I needed to blow off some steam and she was there for me. Hmm, she was there picking up all the dirt. You couldn't talk to David about it? Of course not. He totally had the hots for Jupe, even back then. No way I was going to tell him about it. Fair enough. No more questions. See you. Oh, hey, Naoki. Hey, Sean. Now, look, see around here. Couch smells strange. How many people have sat here? What 
wonder whose job it is to water these. Potted plant. Solar power. How forward thinking. Solar powered light bulb. These lamps are powered by solar energy collected on the collected on the roof. It's handy. Yoki. Hey, how are you feeling? I'm coping. Doesn't sound too positive. You sure you still you sure you shouldn't be still be back at the room resting? If I stay locked up thinking about it, it'll just get worse. Fair point. It may not be my conse, but I can still feel Aaron's emotions when I'm near. Understandable. I have to be here, around people with more positive emotions. Having bright memories will help balance the darker ones. How I feel is a culmination of my experiences, so I have to keep filling my life with positive things. That's good. Really? So... Do you watch horror movies or anything? Con guy! No, not really. They've never really held much interest for me, though. Okay, fair enough. I've seen enough terrible things in real life. There's no need for me to watch it as entertainment. You know what? Understandable. Are you okay with talking about what happened, then? I don't want to have to bring up bad memories. The memories are always there, and I'd like to do what I can to help. I don't want to have to hide all the time. You're a good dude. I respect you. I keep talking about your father. I'm really sorry. Speaking of bringing up bad memories, so how's this I... for... You can't blame yourself for what happened. No. Every time I look back on it, I keep thinking that I was such a coward. I just wanted to pretend that it wasn't happening. I guess I thought that if I wished hard enough, it would just... change. Do you, do you ever think about it? It's impossible not to. I remember everything. Right. Sorry. What is, is. You can't change the past. Now he pauses, and I see a faint flicker of recall on his face. He takes a slow breath and forces a smile. What about your father? Did you know him? My biological one? Not really. I was dumped like a, I was dumped at a hospital like a cliché in a basket. Complete with the world's worst take-care-of-him note. My dad was great. He used to joke that he and Mom were trying to raise their own personal army of children. You had a lot of siblings? Two sisters two sisters and a brother. I think the plan was for more, but we wound up being a real handful. Oh. I think a day went by that John and I didn't get into some sort of pointless fight. That would make us go build something together as punishment. Said it would force us to learn how to work together. John, hey? Man, our yard had a lot of ugly birdhouses built with crooked nails forced us to hang them up outside our windows to remind ourselves that we don't have to be perfect to help others. That working, working together is always more productive than fighting. It really was something. You speak of him in the past tense. He passed away this year. Heart problems running his family. Oh, I'm sorry. He came back as soon as I heard, but his funeral is long past. Ah, that's what brought you back? You could at least visit his grave, right? I could. I was planning to, really. Just that with everything that's happened, I haven't had time to get away. Why don't you talk to Mr. Gursky about it? I'm sure he'll give you permission to go. Mr. Gursky? I don't know. Every time I talk to him, he seems a little... cranky. It's not you. I think Aki just has that effect on him sometimes. Fair. I just wish she wouldn't fight him so much. I think that's just her natural disposition towards me. I know she's trying to protect us, but she carries too much of the burden alone. Also probably correct. And in the end, we let her. All we can do is be there to support her, too. So anyway, about Dr. Johansson. An idea who killed him? It's hard to say. I don't really know much about the outside circumstances. But you remember the crime scene? Anything important you could think of? The door to the bell tower was locked, and my car didn't work on it. Aaron had to let me in. Hmm. So only an actual student at the school could get in there. Now he nods. And then, Aaron went up the stairs first. I almost tripped over him at the top when he found the body. The blood was still pooling. It hadn't coagulated at all, so... Now he swallows as he realizes the meaning of his words. That means that when the bell destroyed his body, 
He was still alive, but it doesn't look like he was trying to get out of the way at all. He must have been unconscious when it happened. Jesus. I sure hope so. But we know that he was quite conscious near the end. So, anyway, anyways, after all that talk of my family history, your family history, and that traumatic, traumatic experience you witnessed, here's the tea. Turns out Nathan really wanted to be in charge of the lab, but Dr. Johansson appointed Jupiter instead. Nathan's been pretty unhappy ever since. That's not good. Do you think he killed Johansson as revenge? Lee May says that there's definitely resentment bubbling around Nathan. It's possible. Killing Dr. Johansson might be an act of revenge, but wouldn't he be more likely to kill Jupiter instead? Hmm. At least, if he did something like that, then he'd be able to get what he really wants. Hmm, good point. Still, it's probably a good idea to keep an eye on him. Even if he's not the murderer, he might take this opportunity to do something rash. No more questions. That's all for now. Okay. Hey, hello, hey, Mr. Bubbly. I hope you slept well. Sean waves at me from across the room, his arms making broad, sweeping motions around above his head. Yeah, it was okay, I guess. Let's just face it, if you've been on a college tour at any point in your life, you've met this guy. Was there anything you wanted to do today? Anything you wanted to try? Um, not really. I thought I'd just wander around campus and talk to people. You don't want to sit in on any classes or anything? Right, class. That's the thing I'm supposed to care about. Well, I guess I might do that. No pressure, man. Just a suggestion. After all, this is supposed to be your experience, so experience it however you want. Oh, um, except for the bell tower. That's off limits for now. Uh, I want to go to the bell tower. Oh, there wait, shit. There was an shit. accident there last night. I heard that someone died. Does that, does this happen often? What? No way, man. I swear this has never happened before. Man, you've got to be going through the worst college experience ever. First you're nearly arrested, then someone dies? I don't know. I think it's a really accurate representation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. You don't let anything get you down, do you? Uh, sh sure. So, did you have anything else you wanted to know about? Hmm, <laughs> head student in the lab. What do you know about Dr. Johansson? He's old. Besides that, he's brilliant. Did you know that the military hired him for a top-secret project about 20 years ago? Uh, it's not very secret if you're telling me about it. Sean lets out a hearty laugh and leans forward, resting his arms against the table. <laughs> Good point. No one knows what it was about, but my parents were students here at the time. Did they work on the project? Nah, they weren't even bio majors. They were... they were, uh... Rich but majors. when people in military uniforms keep going in and out of the biology building, people notice. Not so subtle, huh? Yeah, not so much. Sure makes you wonder what it was all about. My money's on viral warfare. That's terrifying. I wince at the thought. Hopefully not. But that's all in the past. These days, the university's focused more on sustainability than military. That we know of. Sustainability. Yeah. Renewable energy, small carbon footprint, all that good stuff. Don't know if you noticed, but we've got a fleet of bikes placed around campus. Any student can use them. My family donated them with their millions of dollars of money. Reduces the need for driving between this campus and the main one. Plus, it's a good workout. How generous. Sean laughs nervously. <laughs> That's what they tell me. That's an interesting feeling. Who would you be the head student in the lab? Those were not my best days. That's so? I got the job because I had seniority, but it wasn't a good fit. How so? Well, it was a lot of work. Lonely work. I prefer work with a more social angle. Working alone in the back room isn't fun in the slightest. That's why I love being a student liaison. If I weren't, I wouldn't get to meet a cool guy <coughs> like you. Okay. Thanks. 
I'm not sure why he sounds so excited about getting to meet me. <laughs> so I got this sales opportunity, Sean. <laughs> so when did you start dating Chance? We did... Huh. Pretty recently. A couple of months, I guess. We did meet them together, so it's not weird that we're asking about it. I don't think she's very serious about it, though. It seems more like a rebound thing. Or maybe revenge. Revenge? And you're okay with that? Sean shrugs. You never know until you try. Hmm. What does he mean, mean? What does he even mean by that? You don't mind being used? Hey, <laughs> most girls date me for my money. I thought she was going to ask me to fund her singing career at first. It's almost refreshing to be used for a different reason. I guess that's okay. That's kind of a depressing outlook. I guess if you've you're known for your money, I yeah. A brief flicker of disgust moves across Sean's face, but it's quickly replaced by his ever-optimistic smile. Okay, so you covered why she'd be interested in you. Why date her? I have my reasons. Y yeah I'm asking you what they are. What they are is personal. Sorry, dude, but that's prying a little further than I'd like. Understandable. No more questions. Feel free to come by anytime. So, Naoki. Uh, okay. More questions. Okay. Main campus or cafeteria? Aki, guess what? Holy fuck, Aki. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like there's something of a soap opera going on around here. How so? Well, Sean used to be lab head, but that role was passed on to Jupiter, even though Nathan wanted it. Jupiter is now dating David, but David used to date Chance, who is currently dating Sean. I don't suppose you drew out a chart for this? <laughs> I can work on it. Not really. With relationships like this, I can only assume that people are going to want to point fingers at each other. Take any accusations you hear with a grain of salt. Hmm. Gralt? <laughs> Gralt? I'm not feeling it. So, any negative feelings still brewing? I think so. Nathan's a bit raw about things. Jupiter's definitely still unhappy, but for her own reasons. Strangely enough, David's pretty relaxed about the whole situation. David's also into NTR, apparently, so... He doesn't mind that his ex is with Sean now. He and Nathan are actually really positive about Sean. I hear them tell it he's sort of some sort of Prince Charming. <laughs> hmm, Prince Sean name? No, that's all wrong. Hang on, I'll figure it out. You work on that, Aki. Naki says you handle too much on your own. I think he's worried about you. What does that even mean? I'm fine. Mm, are you sure about that? It says you try to shoulder everyone else's burdens, but you never share yours with us. Last night you filtered Naoki's kansai and Limei's and mine. You're putting so much strain on your body. So? So it's not healthy, okay? Naoki and Limei have you to lean on, but who do you have? Khan, I think you're misunderstanding. Look at Naoki. He's a genius. He can master anything he looks at. Li Mei is practically psychic, and the way she fights... At the most, I can push people in a direction they already want to go. I'm so far behind. You're our emotional support. But you deserve to have emotional support yourself. Aki pauses. It looks like she wants to say something, but she's not sure if she should. Khan, you took over that man's body. That's not... She shakes her head. Even with blood contact, I can't tell someone else what to do. But you... you just took over. You're amazing too. But when I look at these amazing things you guys can do, I see how much it tears at you. How hard it is to stand up under the weight of it. But I can make it go away. Just for a little bit, I can help. Can't I help? I'm not saying not to help. I'm just saying your brother is worried you're trying to do too much on your own. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, not saying not to help. I'm saying that you deserve help too, when you need it. And that's okay. He's worried about you. So am I. Then what would you have me do? Leave you to deal with the pain of your Kansai alone? No. What can we do to help you? Why not just trust us to help you once in a while? Including you? I don't know, maybe? I mean, I'm stuck with you guys for a while, right? You make it sound so dire. You want to help so much? Get back to work on this case. That I can do. Thanks, boss. 
No more questions. This is quite an informative episode. We still haven't really made much progress on the case, but we're un really uncovering the social dynamics of this place. So until next time, until then. Thanks for watching.